Hey, it's JC1424 once again with NASCAR Heat 4. And in this episode of our season as Joey Logano, we're going to be completing race 18 of 36, which is the Coke Zero Sugar 400 at Daytona International Speedway. We got our first win of the season at this track, the Daytona 500, and that is our only win of the season. We are halfway through the season, and I have only one win. That's not good. I'm not winning this title, by the way. But in the last episode, raced at Chicago, finished fourth place. Could not have been able to do that without a late race caution. Made a green-white checkered, and ugh, I'm always good at restarts. I'm Joey Logano. But I also did something starting with race 17 with the last, I guess, 20 races of the season. And that would be to change the tire wear settings so that whenever my tire wear comes around, it's less. But also, I have more grip. And the car is not just out of freaking control. And a lot of people I've been watching on YouTube have actually been going with this, and I haven't taken note of it. I, I've just been trying to trust my own brain, make my own decisions. I should trust other people's brains. But you know the AI. You put them on normal, and they don't get hardly any tire wear at all. So I'm supposed to be getting less than them. Instead, I'm just getting just as much of them in this situation. At least something close to how much they're getting. And I put them on more wear, and it's like it all just comes off immediately, and I'm just kicking their ass. But otherwise, it's, it's just stupid. Martin Truex Jr. is still the points leader, and he's kind of pulling away from Denny Hamlin. Kyle Busch sits in third place. Uh, 66 points in front of me right now, I think. And uh, I guess we should just watch out for Keselowski and Kevin Harvick, as always. Ryan Blaney's climbing through the points again, and I guess that's about it. Last episode was a really good one, just because of the quality of the racing that we finally got back. Kyle Larson got clobbered in a big old freaking wreck. But he was still outrunning me on the outside and crap, and I wouldn't be able to finish in front without that restart. But Daytona, let's go out there and win this. I'm using Joey Logano's regular paint scheme because we used uh, the paint scheme that I like the most for the 500. We'll, we'll use his regular one for the other Daytona race. The pole time is a 45.54, and my first lap was a 46.14. Okay, so that was an improvement by about a whole tenth. 30th. 30th. What? I could have sworn we qualified better than this in the Daytona 500. I could be wrong. I spent all that freaking time putting all them tire pressures in and shit, and all I get is 30th. I'm Joey Logano. I have, I have won here twice, actually. I mean, because he, he won in 2015, and I, I got him the 2019 500 in this game. I got to start on the outside of Landon Castle. Why is Ryan Blaney got to be back here? What the heck? Mark Trex Jr. starting 35th. Kevin Harvick starting 39th. Well, I guess this is just Daytona being weird. They put drivers in places where they should be. So the race is going to start at sunset. I guess going into the second stage, it'll be nighttime. I'm going to go put it. Recommended setups. Just the one in the middle. Because I just do that for qualifying raise my tire pressures. I'm still 30. Still on the outside. To be honest, you never know which lane is going to check up. Sometimes the inside, sometimes the outside. Martin Trex failed technical inspection. Who gives a crap? Keselowski is having a stellar weekend. I don't like to see that. Kyle Busch is on the pole. Yeah, there's true X. So, I guess I could close the curtains and then put the lamp on and... Lamp's not even plugged in. Oh, fuck it. I ain't doing shit. I'm just gonna race. <laughs> and I know it's a night race and I want the face cam to look like it's also nighttime because it's it gets my OCD and it's all disorienting. But, like, I, you're the one that watches the videos and I'm the only person that really cares, so... Okay, well, let's get to the inside. Not now, just someday. McMurray, this outside lane, it just has to be the slow one, because right? I'm in it, right? There's a blue card one. Is that uh, 37? Chris Busher? I, I think it is. They're getting up speed on the inside. I got checked up by uh, Joy right here, the 32 car. You know, I have all the DLC for this game. Why does Corey LaJoy just never use that old Spice car? At least I don't recall him having used it. Maybe he did and I just forgot, but he sure as hell ain't using the race as he should be. I hit Bubba Wallace. I guess that means I'm racist. Because that's the shit that's going around the internet right now. Okay. I guess we're just doing stuff on the outside. Let's not hit the wall on the outside, though. 
I'm locked. I'm, I'm so locked. Like, I have no control of my cargoes right now. I'm just, I'm just doing things. Making it four wide. I'm checking up, and we're in a sandwich. I, I'm just, I'm just kind of going with the flow, wherever you guys want to go. Starting on the outside, outside checking up non-stop, cars pass me unless I move over, and then I do move over, and then we're four wide. I mean, four wide, it should be possible at Daytona. But I don't think these cars are actually that proportion. Some tracks are, are too big, other tracks are too small. It, it's probably the track, though. Like, at Martinsville, I feel like the cars are a bit smaller than they should be. We're seeing, like, a picture of, like, a truck series racing at Martinsville in one of these games. And, like, if you look at the real thing, the trucks look so much smaller than they should be. Okay, well, now we're on the inside. Now we're trying to move forward. we got five laps on stage, and two of them are already wasted. I'm going to go. I'm going to slip under you and go. Let's, let's at least get stage points when Kevin Harvick can't and shit. Keselowski's up there. He's probably gaining points on me big time despite having such a great car. He could win this thing if I can. See, now I don't see myself winning this race just because of how terrible it started. Why am I tight? I'm, I'm tight. Super Speedway. This is not NASCAR 2000, okay? Kevin Harvick is not trying. He's going to the outside. We all know how that's gone for us. I'm going to pass below the yellow line because I'm a rule-breaking douchebag. And we're going to keep on gaining positions. Come on, come on, come on. I guess the game just didn't like the fact that I wasn't going to put the effort into the face scam, so it criticized me and punished me for it. Okay, let's go. Let's go. Wow, this is a huge run. I'm just passing three cars in one straightaway. It looks like I am. Hey, don't don't cut me off. Cody Ware, don't cut me off. Don't cut me off, Cody Ware. Bitch. I'm going in there, and you left the hole down there. So I went into that hole, and then you start pushing down into me. I saw that. I see you. You don't see me, because you're in the car. Me, I'm a video game person player guy. I, I can't pass. Fine, I'll push you, even though I hate you right now. I hate you. Actually, I'm pretty sure every driver on the track hates you for the most part. They hate this damn team. If there's lap cars causing wrecks with the leaders, it's always freaking Rick Ware racing. Get, stop blocking me. Get out of the way. Win dicks. You ain't winning any dicks, stupid head. Okay. It had to end early. At least I hadn't passed Cody Ware yet, so it means I get to be on the inside. Everyone's pitting. Um, I would get right side tires. I don't think the left sides are taking much wear. We've been wheeling this thing like crazy. I'm surprised that we haven't worn them down more. But the AI always pit for tires at a super speed where they probably don't need to. Uh, they don't get the, the effect that they should. Okay, I gained 15 spots. So, got a good bunch of guys on the same strategy as me. One of them being BJ McLeod from Rick Ware Racing. But Jimmy Johnson is up here now. And I'll gain 15 spots. See, I didn't need no left side tires probably get four tires at the end of this stage. And I don't know if I would have uh, lost ground or just kind of stayed neutral if I had gone with four tires for that strategy. Why? Why? I, I was ready for that one. I was ready. We're still going. We're carrying a run. We're going. We're going. Damn it. Okay, well, Eric Jones is checking up so I can pull in front of him. Damn, he checked up again. <laughs> like, he saw me pull down. He knew he was going to pull down. I don't know why he had to check up twice. And they broke it off so freaking much that I wound up just getting passed back by a few of them. Oh my goodness. The bump drafting. BJ McLeod crawling into the top ten. He's on the bottom, so he's going places. And I'm going places. And this is Daytona. That is not DJ Kennington. That is some other guy with a last name that starts with a K that I don't remember. Because... All I know is Kennington from the other Astro games. You know, I'm about to get excited that Casey Mears is here, but I don't know how the hell I can forget that for like the past three or four years it's been Ty Dillon. We're going. Not to Benedetto's up here. Is that uh, William Byron in the lead? I was trying to look at the map, and whenever I looked at the map, I didn't enter the corner and turn. So I just freaking crashed into Ty Dillon. I was going to ask if William Byron's leading, because it looks like that's him up there. In the Liberal University thing car. Liberty University, okay. Who the hell would name a university with those? Liberal University. That, that, would be, that would prevent so many people from wanting to even go there. I mean, as if Liberty University, that name doesn't already do enough damage to the people that want to go there. 
think William Byron probably went there. Because since he's a sponsor and he represented them and shit like that. Pull the outside. Preventing me from actually being able to accomplish things. We're going. Agent McLeod's just been staying right in front of me the whole time. I have not been racing well in this race. I'm I'm running well, but I'm not racing well. You know, you usually in a real NASCAR race, you have to, to race well to run well. But this is a video game, so you can just, a lot of the shit you can just do whatever the hell you want to and get away with it, just still be fine. Done crashing Ty Dillon so freaking hard because I wasn't paying attention to the actual track. And yet I'm still up here third place. Jimmy Johnson's leading. Are you you're not gonna stop beating McLeod and taking the lead from you? This is why you're retiring. Because like you, you just can't make a simple decision like this. You can't stop the guy. Well I'm gonna make a move on McLeod and I'm gonna take the lead. I don't really have that much of a run right now. I'm gonna set it up. Don't side draft me. I think Ty Dillon wants to push me. I mean, if you're going to push me, push me. I don't know where I want to make this pass. He's leaving it open? No, he's not. He, he's teasing me. Damn it. Come on. Come on. He's actually blocking me. Damn it, man. And Ty Dillon is he's just not pushing me. Yeah, he's not even wanting to anymore. He's, he dropped off draft partner. Now you do. Well, it's too late now, Dingleberry Head. I lost the stage to McLeod. And now Johnson wants to work with me. I mean, you know, they're programmed to put this thing up and say, hey, they want to work with you. Like, you know, if you wanted to go somewhere and accomplish something, you could have just stayed in the lead. <laughs> I, I got outran by McLeod. I mean, he put on an actual good block. He teased me at one point. You just, you're playing with me. You better not win this race. Okay, we'll get four tires. I don't have damage repair. I'm surprised because of how hard a hit we took with Ty Dillon. And we'll fill the tank. Uh, I mean, I don't think it matters whether I get half a can or one can because we're getting four tires and it could take the same leak no matter what. I'll fall back to 17th. Maybe, maybe these other guys that took right side tires than me, they decided to get right side tires this time and just flipped around. But we've got more laps than we did in the second stage or the first stage. And you saw how many cars are just passed in the last one. So, if we're back here in 19th, I can get back up to where we were. We've got more of the time than we did last time. And plus, we're on the inside to start off, which always helps, just like we were at the last stage. I hate that you could just get stuck to cars. The damn analog stick, you can only be so precise with your steering. But I gotta be honest about it, is that the older NASCAR game is having this track seem so much wider. And I was just talking about that. The cars. They feel too big for the track. I mean, I know Daytona is way more narrow than Talladega, but still, at no point did it feel like you could barely fit two cars into a corner. Why are y'all slowing down? Why do I keep hitting people? Why is it so hard to hold a line? <laughs> why? Why, why, why? You know, I wish I could show you the, the whole tire wear thing I was talking about in the last episode, but it's Daytona. You can go back to the last episode and watch it there and see how it all played out. I thought it played out pretty good. I mean, it wasn't entirely balanced, but it's way more balanced than I've ever seen before. The thing is, while it's balanced, it's not really effective. The tire wear is not effective. It's, it doesn't feel like the tires are really wearing. And I was talking about it with Real Radden before we recorded that NASCAR set finale, and he was like, I mean, in real NASCAR, the tires don't wear with the shit either, so what the hell is not it? You can't dog enough for not being realistic. Ugh, I miss actual tire wear. But some tracks in NASCAR these days do take tire wear road courses or old paved ones. So many intermediate tracks, super speedways. And I guess that um, the short tracks here, you know, they're really hard on tires no matter what. Oh, well, we got back up here, like I was telling you, we're at the bottom, pushing Dominadedu. Michael McDowell is, is leading. Michael McDowell. I can't tell because it's showing me my number. I don't, I, you don't need to show me my number. I already know where I am on the track. You know, some people, if they're, they're new to NASCAR games, they probably have, have no idea. But, <clears throat> it should put the leader's number on top of mine. I'm I'm less important than the leader. But that that is McDowell. And Domenedetto wants to work with me. 
Can you set up a push? Come on. There you go. Let's go, go, go. I've got McDowell's draft. What was that gap? I don't know why Austin Dillon is just sitting up top. Something about these AI. They're just... They're they're challenging. They make the super speed... 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 speed uh, super speedway racing. They make it challenging, but they don't make it really challenging. And until you take the lead, they're all over your ass three wide, of course. But as far as getting to the field, Austin Dillon's just sitting in the top lane. He's not even trying to stay in the draft. And they... They stay in the draft without actually doing it because of their programming is based on speed, not actual draft. Unless it's you. When it comes to the AI, it's like they're not based on draft. It's it's just their speed. But whenever you put you in there, it changes everything. You you are like the, the changing factor. You should be just like everybody else. And I'm taking the lead. Now the Benedetto has helped me out. I am steering myself all over the damn place. Okay, we're about to come. Three laps to go. Oh, he's trying to build up a run. He's trying to set me up. Well, I've got three laps, three and a half laps, something like that. Protect this lead and finally get my second win of the season. Okay, well, Wendell is going to pass me. I wish I could say names and words and stuff, but my, my brain goes faster than my mouth. And I got so tight going to three. I actually got tight and, and couldn't hold back the Benedetto. Now we're just dropping like a rock, going to the white flag. Come on now. It's not over. It ain't over till it's over. Well, in this case, that that stands true. But I mean, if you've got lots of damage, it's already over in that case. I'm trying. I'm not stopping. I'm not giving up. I'm not giving up. Fuck you. Fuck you, 66. I don't know who drives the 60. I don't know who drives 66, but... Lucky. I got the spot on him! Austin Dillon gets the third win of his career, and it is at the same track where he got his second win of his career. And it's also at nighttime, just like the, that Daytona 500 was in 2018. BJ McLeod, he won the second stage. I know he didn't win the first stage, so we're going to find out who that is. Truex finished 11th. Keselowski, my teammate, 12th. Uh, Denny Hamlin, 21st. Harvick, 25th, so we're definitely not worrying about him for a long time. Kyle Busch, 26th. That's a big points game for me. I love big points gains. Uh, Ryan Blaney, 32nd, and the winner of the first stage was Daniel Hemrick, 34th. Martin Truex Sr. is up to a 57-point lead over Denny Hamlin. I had to math that out for a good bit because I suck at mental math, unlike regular math. But Kyle Busch, 34 points ahead of me. We've got a good few races left until the playoffs begin, so I should be able to make this happen, get into third place to end the regular season championship. I would like to, but there's no telling. we got these new settings on for Tyler that really balance things out and uh, hopefully it can really give me a nice chance here but not take it easy on me and everything. Keselowski is almost 50 points behind me so that's great. He's on the first page and he's running well but I am the top Penske driver so that is good. And Kevin Harvick is completely out of sight. He's over 100 points behind me and Blaney's still on the first page. He did lose a spot though. All right it's it's like Joe Gibbs racing right now is doing what I just did in Astro 7 with Hendrick. I can't touch him. I was ahead of Kyle Busch for a while. I want to see if I can just rub it in. It's like, hey, y'all have challenge. You guys have challenge, Joe Gibbs, to take third place for the end of it all. Well, I'll see you guys tomorrow for the Quaker State 400 at Kentucky Speedway, race 19 of 36. And I'm going to be using this white and minty green car because it's the closest I can get to that race logo right there. I don't remember the last time I actually used this paint job. I'd have to look through the playlist. You can find out yourself and tell me in the comments section if I forget about it. But it's, I want to say Quaker Steak because I'm going to Quaker Steak and Lube before, the, the night before I go to the Bristol All-Star Race, which is in a few days from now. See you next time. That's that. And episode over.